I now call on the public orator to present the honorary graduand, Nicola Horlick, for admission to her degree. Vice Chancellor, Mr. Sheriff, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. There is something unique about interviewing a high-flying businesswoman as she drives around in her hybrid electric Prius. The first thought was, for someone so successful, there are so many other cars as an alternative. Nicola Horlick has lived a life in which alternatives have been offered at every turn, and she seems to have always chosen wisely. Nicola was born in Nottingham and then grew up on the Whirl. At primary school, she was one of four girls in the previously all-boys Kingsmead school in Hoylake. Having chosen the alternative of an all-girls environment at Cheltenham Ladies College for two years, she decided on a local school, Birkenhead High School, which she loved. She was also fortunate to do an exchange at an American school in New Hampshire. At one point, Nicola wanted to be an actress, having done poetry and dramatics when younger. She even auditioned for the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts when she was a teenager. But alternatively, Nicola went on to study law at Balliol College, Oxford. She finished at Balliol in 1982, and while wanting, waiting for her husband-to-be to finish at Oxford, Nicola started her career working for her father's business as an alternative to going off to London. Her father had an animal feed binder that needed to be sold, so she pulled on her green wellies to go off to the livestock feed producers and turned a brand new product into a million pound business. Clearly, this was a preview of what was to come. Nicola was then offered a graduate trainee position at the former investment bank, S.G. Warburg & Company. Highly motivated and adept, in only six years at the firm, she was appointed a director at the age of 28. She then joined the struggling Morgan Grenfell asset management firm and became UK managing director a year later. She was charged with turning the company around, but with no precedence of a woman running an international merchant bank, Nicola met some resistance to her leadership and the changes she was trying to implement. But it was her commitment to teamwork and setting a clear and strong vision that helped her change the aggressive and unpleasant behaviors of her older male colleagues into a winning business of a team with mutual respect and even some friendships. This team more than quintupled the company's assets, which doubled again after Nicola left Morgan Grenfell. Nicola considers this her biggest achievement, stating, if the business continues to grow after you have left, then it must have been run well. In the 90s, as a young, vibrant mother of six, working in a man's world, the media quickly dubbed Nicola as the city superwoman, an appellation that she is not particularly fond of. She presented an alternative with her book, Can You Really Have It All?, countering the claims that she did have it all and that one can. She states, I have been very successful in my career, I was given a lot of responsibility at a young age, and I had six children, but one did not survive. No, you cannot have it all. Since 1997, Nicola has established several investment firms, including SG Asset Management, Bramdean Asset Management, and Rockpool Investments. 
Recently, she has been championing and raising the UK profiles of crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer funding with her film finance fund, Glentham Capital, and with Money & Co. This past summer, Nicola became the first recipient of the Champion of Change Award. This is given by Who's Who of Britain's Business Elite, the membership organization for company directors, and it recognizes the achievements of leading business individuals. Nicola publicly supports women in the world of work in many ways. Not only does she advocate for women who want to work to be mothers, though I might say she strongly suggests from personal experience that women do the juggling at a younger age when they have more energy, she is patron to the charity Working Chance Restorative Recruitment. This charity supports women with criminal convictions to find rewarding jobs in mainstream companies, preventing them from becoming further disadvantaged or relapsing into crime. In interviews, Nicola is still being asked either directly or indirectly how one can have it all like she has. Responding to how she got to where she is today seems to be her most honest and consistent and best advice, to which there are no alternatives. Hard work. I haven't found any shortcuts in life. The interview from the Prius, balancing technology with compassion for the environment, was actually a metaphor for the life and career that she was recounting. Nicola's achievements and her challenges illustrate a balance between a driven yet compassionate woman who has accomplished a lot for herself, yet cares deeply for her family and for others. Reflecting back on her time at the Kingsmead School, Nicola was surrounded by boys who were self-confident and did not have self-doubt. It nurtured her own self-confidence through which she became that driven yet compassionate woman. Was it her early beginnings as one of only a handful of girls in an all-boys school which helped her rise to the heights of what was once considered a man's world? Well, that's for her to say. Vice-Chancellor, in the name of the Senate and of the Council, I present to you for the admission to the degree of Doctor of, of Business Administration, honoris causa, Nicola Horlick. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Business Administration honoris causa in this university. Congratulations. It gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Nicola Horlick to address the congregation. Good afternoon, everybody. Very many congratulations to all of you have, who have received your degrees today. There is no shortcut in life that I have found. It is all about hard work, and you have worked so hard. And I speak as a mother 
of six children. And whatever your parents may say to you, the fact is I think that you do have to work harder than we did. Life is really competitive and people do their GCSEs and then their ASs and then their A2s and then don't have a gap year anymore and go straight to university where you have to work so hard and then it's straight out into the world of work with a bundle of debt. So life is really tough, but there are so many opportunities out there. One of my mother's friends was an extraordinary woman, a woman called Dame Alison Munro. And she said to me many years ago, she's dead now, that life is not about just doing one thing. And I think that's never been truer than today. In her life, she did many things. She went to Cambridge University. She then became the most senior female civil servant and was running the Ministry of Defense. She then became the high mistress of St. Paul's Girls School in London. And then when she retired, she couldn't resist going back to work and became chairman of an NHS trust. We will all have to work a lot longer than previous generations because there just isn't going to be enough money to support everybody in their old age and retirement. And so that means, I think, that it's likely that you will do more than one thing in life in your career. And that, in my view, is a good thing. There are probably many jobs that haven't actually even been invented yet because technology is changing everything. And so there are jobs that you will probably do that don't exist today. When you look around you, just in your home, technology has changed everything greatly. And I'm sure that will continue and life will change quite markedly for us all. In the City of London, I remember at the end of the 90s, everybody getting, getting terribly excited about this new thing called the internet. And there was a huge boom in share prices. Every time a company mentioned that it was setting up a website, its share price jumped by about 15%. It was slightly bizarre and worrying that the market suddenly became so frenetic. And although it all crashed and burned and all the share prices collapsed and all those technology companies that had gone from nowhere to being in the FTSE 100 suddenly found themselves being smaller companies again. The fact was that the internet has changed the world forever and to that extent the stock market was right. The skills that you have, just not necessarily through studying your degrees, uh, for your degrees, but just through using technology every day, are immense compared to those skills that we had as children. Just keyboard skills, you know, watching everybody touch typing and the product productivity that comes out of being able to type faster than the people who used to use two fingers makes a difference to the way that you will operate in the workplace. My career has been based around finance and money in the City of London, although the City of someone was asking me earlier where my office is, and it's not in the City anymore, it's actually in the West End because the City has moved to a large extent away from its core. But in the world of finance, we have graduates who come from all sorts of disciplines, people who did English, people who did history. I know that today there are a lot of people here who have humanities degrees. Just because you have studied a particular thing at university does not mean to say that you cannot go into a different area. We have a very vibrant and dynamic economy in the UK where there is great opportunity for all of you. And I hope that you will grasp that opportunity with both hands and go out into the world and succeed. You can do anything that you want. And I would particularly say to the girls, and I don't want to be sexist, but the fact of the matter is that having had four girls and two boys myself, often girls are less self-confident and don't necessarily believe that they can. All I can say to you is that you can do anything that you want today. We live, fortunately, in a country where there is largely equal opportunity and there are so many opportunities out there. I'm extremely honored to have been given an honorary degree by the University of Chester today. This is my home city. I lived only eight miles away from this glorious cathedral. I have wonderful memories of my childhood, running around the Roman walls, coming to the mystery plays in the gardens of the cathedral, walking around the cloisters, walking around the rows. It's a beautiful city. 
Many of you don't come from here, but have lived here for the last few years, and I hope you will revisit it in the future, as I will too. So good luck to all of you, and thank you. <laughs>